Hey guys, let's talk about simplifying radicals with different indices. So what I'm specifically talking about are problems like this, so like a square root times a cube root, so either multiplying them together or dividing them. Um, so just as a reminder, pause and try the examples, and I've got free guided notes available. And if this video is helpful to you, please consider giving it a like, a comment, or subscribing to the channel. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about is just we, we actually need to do a little review. So pause here and just make sure that these problems are good. So to do 8 to the 1 third, so that is the same thing as the cube root of 8, which is just 2. And then for 25 to the 3 halves, so remember you take the square root first and then you cube. So this ends up becoming 5 cubed and so this is 125. So if you are not comfortable with this or if you don't know how to do this, then you might want to consider watching um, just some videos on working with this before you start this video. And I'll have some links to that in the comments. All right, so let's get to it. So how do you actually do a problem like this? Well, we do have a multiplication rule, but uh, just as a reference here. So the multiplication rule kind of looks like this. So if I have I have to have the same index to be able to multiply. So you just straight up cannot multiply these two things because we don't have a rule that says you can do that. So instead what you do is you think about this as what would I do with rational exponents. So if I rewrote all of this as rational exponents, this would be x to the one half times x to the one third. And so we actually have talked about kind of doing problems like this um, in other videos. Again, you can check out the, the links in the comments if you want to watch those. So I need to add these two exponents together. So I'm going to have to get a common denominator, uh, which in this case would be 6. So I can rewrite this as x to the 3 over 6 plus uh, 2 over 6. So I ultimately get that this is x to the 5 over 6. Now it depends on the problem type, sometimes this is good enough, but a lot of times with problems like this you're actually going to have to put your final answer back into radical form. So remember, the bottom part is the index, so that's the number that goes outside the root, and then this will actually go inside the root, the 5. So my final answer here would be the 6 root of x to the 5th. And one final note. It could be possible that this might actually be able to be simplified farther. So if that happens, then go ahead and do that. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and try these two and then hit play when you're ready. So for this first one, so this is going to be x to the one third times x to the one fourth. So once again, I need to convert these to having a common denominator. So the common denominator here is 12. So one third as a, the new fraction will be four twelfths. And then one fourth converted to that uh, with the denominator of 12, that'll be three twelfths. So I get x to the seven twelfths. And so this is kind of a crazy looking radical, but I'd get the twelfth root of x to the seventh. Okay. For the next one, so this has got a little bit of a twist to it. So now we're actually dividing here. So the quotient rule would say that I divide the top minus the, the bottom exponent. So first let's just rewrite these. So this is x to the 2 fifths over x to the 1 third. So I just need to subtract these now. So that would be according to the quotient rule. So of course I've got to get another common denominator here. So writing, rewriting 2 fifths, uh, having the denominator 15. So that'll be 6 over 15 and then one third with the denominator 15. This would the equivalent would be 5 over 15. I'll move over here. So ultimately I get x to the 1 over 15. And so this is just the 15th root of x depending on the format that I actually need my answer in. Okay. So that's kind of the idea behind this. Um, if you want to try a few more, I do have these three. So you know. Uh, if you'd like more practice, go ahead and pause and hit play when you're ready. Otherwise, that, that's kind of the idea. Okay, so for this first one, so this is going to be x to the 3 fourths times x to the 3 fifths. So the common denominator here is 20, so this will become x to the 15th over 20, and then 
uh, three-fifths, uh, that'll be 12 over 20. So now, this becomes x to the 27th over 20. So if I write this, so notice I can't simplify this any farther, but if I write this out in radical notation, so this actually would not be a simplified radical. So now we have to just think about what we know about radicals. Um, I'll have some links in the comments again about just simplifying these if you're rusty on this. So when this happens, so I can take out, uh, so, so basically the, the thing here is you can't have this exponent be higher than the index. So if I take this out, this will simplify as x times the 20th root of x to the seventh. So that would be what you would do for that one. Okay. Now for this one, so I've got, I'll just go ahead and write this right away in uh, its exponent form. So this will be x to the one half minus two thirds because this is x to the one half here. This is x to the two thirds here. So I have to rewrite these now with the common denominator. So let's see, that will be three six minus four six. And so now I get x to the negative one over six. And so now we have some, some issues here. So this is kind of unique. So first of all, I have to write this without the negative exponent. And so this would be one over the sixth root of x. Now, depending on your class, you may or may not know um, how to rationalize. So if the word rationalize means nothing to you at the moment, then you could probably leave it like this. Um, if you're in a course where you need to actually rationalize this, so then you would have to take this a step farther. So it just kind of depends on where you are in your class. So just as a final note, so maybe I'll just say this is like a extra steps. So to rationalize this, I would have to multiply this by the sixth root of x to the fifth to get rid of that radical in the denominator. And remember, you're trying to make sure that you have enough powers of x so that you actually cancel this out. So I get the sixth root of x to the fifth just over x. So again, if that's something you've, you've never seen before, you'll probably see it in the course that you're in. If you're one of my students, um, we actually talk about doing this a little bit later, um, but different courses can do different things. So just wanted to mention everything. Okay, so for this last one, so I'm gonna have x to the two thirds um, plus one half. So I'll just go ahead and just jump straight to that step. So now I get x to the four six plus three six. So this is x to the seven six. So there's the sixth root of x to the seventh and then that can be simplified as x times the sixth root of x if I simplify all that. Okay. And so that's it. Um, so please, once again, uh, comment, like, subscribe. Um, that's, it's really helpful to me if you can just give me a like at least on the video if it was helpful to you. And I will see you guys next time.